people who truly understand what is meant by self-reliance know they must live their lives by ethics rather than rules. Technology and the impact of technology seems to change at unprecedented rates. Our laws and rules also change, but nowhere near the rate of change for technology. It can feel like the story of the tortoise and the hare, a race between unequal partners, inviting conflicting interpretations. Technology, the hare, races to the finish line, while the laws, the tortoise, plot along to the finish line laboriously in pursuit. Ethics can help us navigate this perplexing race between technological change, rules, and the law. What is ethics, anyway? Ethics is the study of what it means to do the right thing. The right thing is not always obvious. The study of ethics goes deep, and separate points of view emerge on the topic. Many will regard ethics as universal, unique, and applying to all while others consider ethics to be more like a set of rules providing a framework and a context. Most assume ethics involves rational people making free choices. We may hear the terms ethics and morals used equally. We might ponder ethics as what ought to be the right thing, and morals as what is the right thing during a moment in time. As we engage ethics and technology, We'll want to consider these differences. We'll also want to keep in mind the different ways we look at ethics and the philosophical approaches to ethics. One such approach is a deontological approach. With this approach, ethics are more like absolute rules which must always be applied regardless of the consequences. The classic example of this approach is the rule, do not lie under any circumstance. We can think of many examples where holding to the rule may lead to bad consequences. Another ethical approach is that of utilitarianism. With utilitarianism, we consider the consequences of an act, decide how it relates to the affected people, and we work out the utility of the act. With this approach, we consider an act good if it increases utility for all, and wrong if it decreases it. Like the deontological approach, we might see shortcomings with utilitarianism. While an act can increase utility for all, it can hurt individuals. This conflict of bad consequences with the deontological view and damage to individuals with utilitarianism leads us to consider the natural rights of the individual. A natural rights approach views ethical behavior as acting in such a way that respects a set of fundamental rights of others, including the rights to life, liberty, and property. This approach focuses on the results of how people interact. In employing a natural rights approach, one might consider an act unethical if it leaves people at a loss of these fundamental rights. Rights and interpreting them are often conceived of as negative or positive rights. It might be easier to use the terms liberties and claim rights instead of negative and positive when we study ethical issues in computing. Negative rights or liberties are conceived as allowing people to act without interference. This approach views ethical behavior as acting in such a way that respects a set of fundamental rights of others, including the rights to life, liberty, and property. We can cite many things the U.S. Declaration of Independence and the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which guarantees us negative rights or liberties. Positive rights, or claim rights, can be rights that impose something on people for the benefit of others. For example, a radio station may not want to give airtime for everyone. When we force a radio station to give equal airtime for political ads, we are doing so by interpreting freedom of speech as a claim right. As you might surmise, liberties and claim rights can come into conflict. It may befit us to clarify how we interpret rights when we talk about them. The golden rule is a general rule for how to behave that argues you should treat people the way you would like other people to treat you. 
when it comes to ethical behavior, the golden rule may be a valuable resource. It is simple and direct, yet leaves room for choice and consideration of others. One thing that is clear is that solving ethical problems is not free from doubt nor easy. Human behavior, choices, and actions can be complex. As we think about our ethical choices, let us consider these factors. Acts can be thought of as right, wrong, or okay. Harm alone may not be enough to call an act unethical. Goals and constraints may come into conflict when taking action. Ethical decisions may be right or wrong, yet we may approve or disapprove of them. And ethical principles may help us pass laws which can set standards and leave room for voluntary choice. As you consider ethical approaches to technology-related issues, take into account the suggested framework for working with issues. We want to be sure to define the technology and the change or changes taking place due to the technology. We'll also want to make sure we describe the consequences, both intentional and unintentional, that are or may take place because of the technology and the change. The technology, the changes, and the consequences create issues. Issues are the reason we formulate, test, talk about, or debate. State the issues and offer a context for the issues. In using our framework, we'll have a solid foundation for approaching the issues in a reasonable way. Now consider the ethical perspectives we've outlined earlier. While not an exhaustive list of perspectives, the deontological, utilitarians, liberties, claim rights, and golden rule approaches give a manageable set of views for contemplating issues. Consider these approaches, choose one or many approaches to look at the issue, and interpret any rights that may be involved. These first six building blocks of the framework can give a solid footing for working with any technology and change. With this solid understanding and footing, you'll be in a position to, as St. Ignatius of Loyola once said, go forth and set the world on fire. Music